64-bit legend. Welcome. Legend of the game like GoldenEye, I'm more than right. Yeah. The perfect dart is dreams that seem to come to light. 64-bit, the shit, it's as real as it yeah. gets. We can yeah. talk sports, games, and music, take your pay. Point with the news, pull up and crack a brew. Smoke one with the crew, tune in and take a view. Watch. We're here to raise the bar from the lowest yeah. mark. Sit your yeah. ass down and listen, it's time for the show to start. Show to start. Show to start. Show to start. I had this whole great intro. <laughs> Ready, will and ready to go, mm-hmm. and you pulled an audible and said we weren't recording. So this is another episode of Sixty Four Bit Legends. I'm not even going to do the re- intro that I was going to. I started right. with a, a a small L, and then you cut it all off. Well, because I it, the file wasn't created. So I had to name the file first. That's the here's, problem. Here's a new episode, Sixty Four Bit Legends. I am Bobby Caboose. Little weird start. Always looking for that hot tag is Melvin Troy. Oh yeah. Oh, we're tagging in in a big, 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 big way. Big, big way. Um. Yeah, it's uh, first day of spring technically as we're it recording is. this. Uh, and I'll be honest, it doesn't feel like spring. It feel um, yeah. You know what that means? The groundhog must have saw his shadow. Actually, he didn't. He's- I think it's supposed to be an early. Spring. What if he was? The, they were lying though, and the groundhog did see his shadow. Then we still got cold. Well, technically, it doesn't. It's like, still cold. So, so it's, if the groundhog sees a shadow, right? No, yeah. it's eight weeks until winter. Right? Okay, yeah. And then if he doesn't see a shadow, it's eight weeks till spring. So it's like the same fucking thing. Oh, is it really? I, I believe so. Oh, I thought it was like a short. I thought you had like eight weeks. It's just worded different. What? Is it really? I believe so. Because that's why, like, it's what? fucking retarded. Hold on a sec. I'm looking this up. Hold on. Hold on. Groundhog. Groundhog rules. <laughs> day rules. I did not know this. I mean, that was back in February. Okay, so if a groundhog emerges from its burrow on this day, Groundhog's Day, um, and sees its shadow, it will retreat to its den, and winter will go on for six more weeks. Okay. If it does not see its shadow, spring will arrive early. But what is it, what what does early it's mean? Six weeks. Really? Yeah. It's just the time difference. That doesn't. Wait a minute. That doesn't even make any. Se- yeah. What is early though? Hold on. What is? Okay. See the shadow. Spring will arrive early. In 2024, 2024, an early spring was predicted. Okay. Okay. So it was early spring was predicted. But what, is, what does early mean, though? Like, we don't... I don't know what that even means. It's the same time difference. They just fool you. It's a stupid groundhog. Why are they doing this, then? Just for stupid tradition. What is... And you know what I'm not seeing anywhere? No one... <laughs> No one is explaining what early means. It doesn't explain. They just say it's early. Yeah, it's it's the gonna, same thing. They, I like that they have a hard rule for if he sees the shadow. It's six weeks yeah. flat. But if he doesn't, it'll be early. Yeah, it'll be early. Like by a day? Maybe. Maybe by a couple of hours. I mean, technically, though, it was it was getting warm for a while. It was yeah, like no. 70s in the February, so maybe he was right. Well, you know, Michigan weather, you know, you can have all four seasons in like two days. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I'm dying over here. Over and I'm not sure if that's just a Michigan gone. thing or a Midwest thing. Like, I wonder if like Minnesota can do that or if oh. they just, you know, suck. <clears throat> well, there, he's in Pennsylvania. So, you know, I figure it's all kind of the same. You know, it's kind of like a Midwest. I would, I would think it's a Midwest thing. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's any rules outside of it, or maybe it's Pennsylvania early or, or early only. No, because it can't be Pennsylvania only because they show it on the news here. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, it's Punxsutawney Phil. I mean, the best thing to come out of Groundhog's Day with the, was the movie. That's about it. Uh, which, by the way, they're making another Ghostbuster. Speaking of Bill Murray, I thought that I um, thought they were making another Groundhog Day. Were they really? I, I think so. Well, they did a they did a commercial. Bill Murray did a Groundhog's Day commercial for the Super Bowl or something. I, I think so. Yeah, and they brought back some of the people mm. from the from the yeah, movie. For some reason, I thought I heard that they were going to make a sequel. No, oh. I don't know. It's going to fucking suck because it's thirty some years later. Yeah, and it's just like, what's he doing? He's still doing Groundhog's Day. Yeah, I guess. like he's been just doing it the whole yeah. time. 
<laughs> like that's it's fucking sequels, man. I was thinking about that though, like what it would be like to to live a Groundhog's Day, like if you did the same day over and over and over again. And honestly, like yeah, there's like little things where you get the reboot every day. Yeah. But what would suck is like you wouldn't make any pro. Like it would almost be. It, it, it would, would be like fifty first dates. Yeah, like like you and, have to watch a videotape and be like, okay, this is my life up to this point, and I don't yeah, remember anything else. Like nothing. You only can enjoy something for twenty four hours. Like I wouldn't be able to like. You you wouldn't be able to like play a video game because if it took more than a day to play, you would you wouldn't be able to finish it. You would you'd have to start all over again. That would be maddening. I would unless it's just mental and it's just you. And, like, the world continues, but you think you have to do the same thing every day? Like, 50 first dates? I'm sure somebody broke it down, but, like, how long was Bill Murray in the Groundhog's Day? I'm I'm sure somebody did the math on it. And then the question is, is if it was years, how many years? Because it probably was years. Because he learned to play piano at the end of it, (laughs) like, very well. Yeah. And so it had to have been years did that add years to his life for when he was unlocked from the Groundhog's Day curse? Did he like start? So if he started Groundhog's Day at like age 40 and in Groundhog's Day universe, it took him 15 years to get out of it. Does he leave 40 or does he leave 55? Like, like how does, cause he can't age with everybody. Cause that'd be weird. It's like, why are you so old all of a sudden? What happened? Yesterday I saw you look young. Now you're an old man. And then they have to tell him, like, look, dude, you've been in a padded room for the last 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Like, this shit, none of that shit happened. Yeah. And then, you know, he, he it turns into <laughs> other, other shit, other psychological stuff. Or yeah, like, it turns into, like, a dark, like, yeah, psychological horror film. Yeah, like, what if, like, a voodoo man or woman, <laughs> yeah. like, put a spell on you, and that's that was the spell, and you have to do the same thing every day, and you uh. think it's the same day, but it's not. Yeah. And like, but you go through the same routine and then once you snap out of it, yeah, like your kids are like grown. That'd be frightening. That's that's what I imagine like dementia being or like Alzheimer's where you're just like locked in. Oh, and dude. Like w- what's going on? What happened to you? I don't know if you've ever talked to somebody that's like, oh, yeah. in like shoulder deep in de- dementia shit. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. But it's it's funny. Like. I say this lightly, but it's like what they do remember. Right. Like I had it recently where I had to kind of like this, the, they, this person had to ask me who I was probably five times, but all of a sudden they pulled out a memory from like 30 years ago. Like it was nothing. Yeah. Like it was like, Oh, and then you just went into this thing and they were like, well, wait a minute, who are you again? Who are you with? Yeah. Like yeah. some, like some dude, when I worked at the nursing home, like, he would pull out, like, shit, like, um, because he worked at Ford, like, in the 50s, mm-hmm. and he, like, designed a couple of the of the models, and he would, like, pull out random facts about these fucking cars. Yeah. and th- But then he wouldn't know his name, or, <laughs> or maybe not his name, but other people's names and shit. He's living a groundhog day. Yeah. That's, that's what I, that's the, the lighter side. So when I get it, when I get dementia, then I can just, you know, if I'd be like, oh, no, no, I'm just in a groundhog day. Like yeah. we're just we're just groundhogging this. I'm gonna be like, look, just put the same episode <laughs> of Boy Meets World on, so I can at least memorize it. I mean, you're living that already, I, technically. That, that, yeah, I kind of am. When this Boy um, Meets World, Boy Meets World. That shit was awful. It's awful. Awesome. That is the worst. By the way, I you know they got into their la- like because every couple seasons they start a new intro, you yeah, know, because yeah. the kids get older or whatever. And um, the one that I think is the final intro, yeah. they get like a um, a uh, like a British band to sing the it, and because it, it was like in the nineties, it was probably like around yeah. like the time of like Oasis and you know those type of bands. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, why can't you just get an American singing band? Because it, it really bothered it bothers me when you know the accent comes in when they're like when they say Boy Meets World. You know, it's 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 funny like. We've I know we've talked about this, but like that is the show that you'll go back to and you'll read that and like step by step. You'll just rewatch it mm-hmm. all over. Say by the bell. And it's like I talk to other people about like, oh, what's a, like a show that you'll rewatch over and over? And it's usually something like 
like they consider it more of a high art, like oh, the Breaking Bad or like the Sopranos or you know, um, Lost or something like that. They'll pull out like one of those types of shows or some show on one of those networks. Okay. And you have Boy Meets World is like your high art. And Saved That's, by the Bell. Yeah. So, and, but this here, is like terrible. Here, no. It's it, the worst. Hey, it's great TV. King, it's the, King of Queens. Dude, it's jo- King of Queens is okay, but the rest of those are just, it's junk garb. It's like. No, no, no. no. It's the Cheeto mm-hmm. of fucking television. And you're, and no, it's the jalapeno Cheeto. Yeah, even and, worse. And those are awesome. Oh, they're garbage. They're fucking amazing. So. You know, in my defense, too, okay, you know, not only are these great shows, I'm not taking mm-hmm. any way, anything away from the quality of these shows that I watch. Shows are terrible. But, you know, you mentioned, like, you know, The Sopranos or The Warrior or yeah, Breaking yeah, Bad. Yeah, that's another good one. Yeah. You know, those type of shows. The shows that I watch on repeat, right, I'm usually doing something. So I'm either working, I'm either, you know, playing a video game while doing it. Yeah. So, it's something that I can't invest my whole, my whole thought process yep. and my whole attention to it. So, like something like The Sopranos, like unless you've seen it a bunch of times, I know you have, but like, I, you know, if this was my second time watching it, I wouldn't, I would have to pay attention. Well, okay, so but so I do understand that, I understand that um, a little bit because I do that, but not with TV shows. I'll just get like a YouTube video. And like that's like an hour or two hours long or like a stream and I'll just put that on or a podcast yeah. where it's more like – but it's it's like better quality. No, it isn't. Oh, there's, fuck yeah. Are you kidding no, me? There is no better quality than Sean Hunter sneaking Dude, out and joining a cult. Listening to like Joe Rogan interview – I don't know. Like Hulk Hogan was one that I remember sitting and playing video games and listening to that for three hours. And I was like, oh, I'm walking away with something – Plus, I'm playing a video game. Like, that's bad. But you just, what, to hear Corey Matthews fucking go through some strange little drama? Like, for the 20th time? Like, no, today. It's just junk. No, it's it's junk junk. entertainment. It's not junk. Today, Eric had to go visit a, uh, a college campus and they had to stay in a sorority house and there was no boys allowed, but they had to sneak them in and. Um, some girl who got dumped by the quarterback of the football team was in distress, and Corey helped her through it. And she wanted I, to sleep with Corey, and he didn't want to because he still had Topanga. Ah, oh, that's just such a terrible story. It's not a terrible it's story. It's so fucking bad. amazing. Just because you haven't experienced these lovely things in life but so the, that we call life, the, and you're not a boy that meet, met the world. It's not even like a good sick Like, if you said you were doing this with, like, home improvement... Home or like, like another one that's going. Or, or like Roseanne or something. Yeah, I never got into like, the Cosby show. You know, that's that's the thing. You didn't get into that's that's the difference. You have this like you have this like suburban sitcom taste. Roseanne was real. <laughs> that was some real shit. They suburban were, my ass. I watched the Wayans brothers. They were very urban. They lived in New York City or Chicago. They like owned a hotel, didn't they? No, they didn't. He owned a newsstand That's still. inside a lobby of a place. Yeah, you know how expensive that is? And then his dad owned a diner next door. Yeah, they're like entrepreneurs. Like, yeah, but they they live in a shitty apartment. Yeah, but like in Roseanne, they tried to open up a loose meat sandwich shop and it, it went under. And then there was a time where Roseanne was almost assaulted by some dude that came in. Like it was, But it was still fun. Yeah, so it's, it's the, I told you Sean Hunter, he joined a cult. Yeah, but that was a stupid cult. That wasn't no, it even, was a, like, realistic. They hugged each other and stuff. They were like, we can hug you. And they, he, he he captured lost souls like Sean Hunter and Corey and Jonathan Turner, who, again, in 1994, uh. the three coolest guys in the world were Jeff Goldblum, Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, and Jonathan Turner from Boy Meets World. Guy, Three coolest that, guys in I don't 1994. Even know. I can't even fully like picture the guy's face. And the guy from Hall and Oates that's either Hall or Oates with the dark John hair. John Oates. You're talking about John yeah, Oates. He used is... a little past his prime in 1994, but he would have fit right in if Hall and Oates was a 90s band instead of an 80s band. <sighs> that show is terrible. Like you're, no, it is you're, awesome. you're rotting your brain. No, it isn't. You, you need to put on, just go. Dude, you would be better off. Listening to someone 
break down and commentate on each episode of Boy Meets World. That's what I would love uh, via to do. YouTube. That's what I would love to do on this podcast. Well, not episode this one. You, one. Can, you can start a new one. You can start a new. You don't have to do it on this it one. It could be. It, it could. It could be called like sixty four Be- Legends Meet World. You you could do that. Us I'm meets gonna, world. Nah, I'm not gonna. You could. <laughs> Saved by the Legends. We could do it. I don't know about that. I just, that we can might break be, down every episode of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> that might be a solo project because I don't know if I'm going to sit through all that again. Dude, you love AC Slater. No, I don't. You're like, you know what you are? You're like the sidekick in all of these shows. You're, what? You're like the AC Slater. You're like the Sean Hunter. You're the the Cody who lives in his van. Cody. You're like, you have like this alternate lifestyle that, you know clashes with these great sitcoms you're like the kimmy gibbler kimmy gibbler you're a nerd bomber a nerd bomber with cheese ah that's all of these shows are terrible and the fact that you should re-watch them is just sickening no it isn't no it isn't because it's it's fucking amazing what other uh, uh, i i just i rewatched the whole thing of uh married with children Okay, that's that was, that's that, a great show. That'd be worth. I would actually like to rewatch it. Where do you rewatch that at? Hulu. I don't have Hulu right now, but okay, that's good to know because I I wouldn't mind. It's been a long time since I've seen that show, but I know it went on for like a long time. I don't oh, know. It was a, like a lot longer than I thought. It was like it's like eleven, twelve seasons. Yeah, and each season is like twenty episodes. Yeah, it's a long watch. But I would that one. I wouldn't mind watching like that one. I put up the that one and like. Martin, I'd watch. See, that's a, those are the sitcoms I like. See, I didn't like Martin. Martin, I, li- I was a Wayne's Brothers guy. Uh, you know, uh, my wife Mary and kids. No, Roseanne, Bernie Mac show. Bernie Mac, that was good. I liked that one. Um, you know, Wayne's was like, eh. I was like, eh. I don't know. It doesn't really do it for me. I was like, in Living Color was better. Um, you know, that would be. I'm trying to think of what what others. Step I'm, by step. Nope. That was a great. No, one. it was the modern day I'd rather Brady watch, Bunch, dude. I would rather watch Coach than Step by Step. The Coach could be great. I'm we, not. I sure. would rather watch Wings. Wings could be great. I did watch all the Wings back in the day and like USA because they they play they play it so much yeah. on, <laughs> during the summer. Oh yeah, in the summertime, I could watch the whole series <laughs> just on USA in the morning. Like it was just it was constantly on. And then uh, yeah, they end up selling like the. Uh, the um what are they called the airport yeah um but that i mean that show wasn't full terrible. house oh god that was awful that was awful i would rather watch frasier than those other no, shows man those are that's stupid and i don't even like frasier like that's, that's stupid but listen you know what i should watch is drew the drew carey show i, I thought that I was just to, i used to watch that i would watch it but i just thought it was just too too drew yeah, it was just too much. Too Drew. It was a little too much. It got a little too, like, meta. I didn't like it. I didn't like... I just remember, like, the pool table in the backyard. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. I didn't like the Mimi character. I thought the yeah. whole Mimi character... Was, the Mimi character ruined it for me, in my opinion. She like, was just his co-worker, right? Yeah, but she was, like, his, like, arch nemesis. Yeah. And I was just like, ah, this is irritating. This is too much. I didn't like it. And then I like, drew Carrie... Always was dating like some hot girl, and I was like, "This is not in is Cleveland." A- he's in Cleveland too. Yeah. Well, that's where he's from. Yeah, but I'm like, Drew Carey. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. You know, you know, I'm not. You're not selling. You're this like today. the Flanders of this program. You're just Debbie Downing on everything. And Flanders was not a Debbie Downer. Yeah, he, he was, was actually like a. He hated all of Homer's he was, activities. He was a devout um, optimist. Yeah, but he like, hated all of Homer's activities. Yeah, well, they were sinful. That's why. I'm yeah. not saying these are sinful, though. I'm just saying they're just garbage. It's they're just, not garbage. Just as far as once, quality goes. Once once you open up your mind and your heart to these shows, you'll live a better quality life. I don't know about this. You will. Trust me. This sounds like a lot of... Remember, I was a piece of shit up until you know I started watching this, and then I'm good. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. Well, see, it's been so long. It's I didn't know been that, rewired in your brain. I didn't know that, that this I'm was awesome just, because I rewatched all these shows. You got, you were like I'm reborn again. You were saved by yes. the watching terrible 
terrible '90s it's not sitcoms. Terrible. It's not terrible. Like the worst of the worst. You didn't no. pick any good ones. The, okay, the worst of the worst. That's why they're still being repeated on TV today. Yeah, because they're garbage. No, it's they're cheap. not garbage because they're fucking great uh, and they're classic. I would, dude. I have I I'd, I'd have more respect if you said you were watching like reruns of Judge Judy. My dad does that, so that's good. That's like a good show. I like it. I, yeah, yeah. I it's, like Judge it's, Judy. It's okay for background noise. Yeah, I, I like it. It's fun time. You know what else is fun? You know what else is fun? What? Gang bangs. Okay. <laughs> have you ever been in one? No. Have Neither you? Have I. Okay. No. I have actually have no interest in it. But um, the <laughs> I didn't know how to get us out of that to talk about the subject at hand. The subject at hand is gang bangs. I don't know how to get us from Boy Meets World to gang bangs. Well, <laughs> that's... You could have mentioned the episode of Boy Meets World where they have a gangbang. Did they really? Yeah. When was that? See? It's a good show. Check they it out. They did not get out of it. The- but there was that one girl, that ginger girl, did become a porn star. See? And I saw the porn she was in. She got fucking railed. It was crazy. And I was like, you're fucking Boy Meets World. This isn't even, like, hot to me. This is, See, like, and we even, like, oddly... We even forgot Easy e was in Saved by the Bell. We looked that up last week. Uh, yeah, no, that wasn't easy. And that Suge was... Knight should have been in an episode of. Yeah, no, we're we're. Th- <laughs> Speaking of gang bangers, you're talking about gang bang. Yeah, and we're not talking about gang bangers as far as like street gangs. No, we're talking about uh, gang bang. In particular, I came across this months ago, uh, or no, I guess this was written nineteen days ago. I thought it was earlier than March 1st. So, <laughs> months ago, yeah. March 1st, it is now March 19th. Oh, you know what? It was updated. So wait, maybe it was written back in like February. There was an update made. Um, yes, it was up lately updated since it was published. So that was republished on March 1st. Okay, so yeah, it was like a month ago probably. But anyway, so I came across this on Twitter, and I don't even remember how. But basically there's this some girl... And she's an OnlyFans girl, but she, I guess, understands t- statistics. 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 So she's a math major. Yeah, she's kind of a math major. And she's not, She, you can kind of see it, like, unfortunately I wasn't able to talk about this on a stream be, for obvious reasons. Um, but since this is just audio, we could we could cover this. So um, this is, here's pictures of what she like looks like, but you can kind of see in her face she kind of has, she's got a nice body and all, but she does have like math face. She does. She does have math face. Like every everything else is like, hey, ever that all looks well put together, you know, just traditional, nothing too crazy, nothing extra porno, but she has math face. Yeah, she definitely has math face. So anyway, um, because I this is her, uh, what OnlyFans Twitter or whatever the fuck you know where she's all nude. But so she set up. It's got a weird bush. It is. Well, it's old fashioned. It's old. It's nineties yeah. style. You know. Um, Maybe but, she's going for like a division sign or something. Probably. It's she's got math face. What are you gonna do? She, it, it's anyway. So I came across this and I thought thought this was intriguing because you know she apparently the the setup is that. She, um, where was the post originally? Um, oh, I lost it. God damn it. Well, it doesn't matter. It's, she wanted to set up for her birthday, a gangbang. Just privately. I don't think they filmed it from what I understand. Not that I would really care to see because that's not really my thing. I never understood that, by the way, back in the day. Like there was always that thing of like, oh, world's biggest gangbang of like a hundred people. And I'm like, who... Who wants to watch didn't, that? Didn't some like porn Who star do like, like the Daytona 500 or something? Like, yeah, yeah. I think it was and, like had just like 500 dudes. I want to say this actually came up in a video I saw recently about Howard Stern. I think she was on Howard Stern, and I think it was called the Houston 500. Is what it, I think it was what the vi- video said. There was a. Um, I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> it's gonna like. Yeah, world's biggest gangbang. Yep. Yeah. No, no, it was called close. The Houston 620. All right, so we were kind of both a little yeah. off. But um 
Yeah, that was back in 1999. Okay, that would be that would be the Howard Stern era that I watched. Yeah, there's here here she is on Howard Stern right there. So, um, yeah, like 620 people. Like, who wants that? Yeah, it was. I think it was originally supposed to be the Houston 500, and they had 620 guys instead. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, something like that. And um, and I'm just like, I don't know. Like for the freak show aspect, I guess you could sell DVDs because back in the day, that's how they. Made their money, especially right. still in 99. You're making your money on DVD or tapes and yeah. all that. So people would just buy it for the goof. And then that would be it. But like generally speaking, like I don't know anybody who's like, oh, yeah, dude, that's my favorite one. And yeah. it's like, that's a little much. Dude, I love when guy number 127 comes in. <laughs> yeah. Just freeze it at that point. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, I actually, uh, before we wrap this up, I actually have a poem. Uh, that goes in line with this um, okay. this this subject, but um, um, I'm just gonna just don't say the title outside because I'm gonna Google it. But anyway, so um, all right. So anyway, so this girl sets up a gangbang. Yeah, and she's like I said, attractive, has a big social media reach. Yeah. So you'd think, hey, you know what? You could probably have the connections, and you put it out there. You could probably get enough people to right. do it. But I found it intriguing about like how many people she originally had to reach out to, uh, and like the process to it. While I read this, thinking like, "Oh, this is stupid," I started to get more and more sucked into this. Uh, for those who want to look it up, it's some girl named Ayella A E L L A. Okay, I guess. Um, and uh, you can just look it up on Twitter. Yeah, it's A E L L A underscore girl was the Twitter account that I seen this posted on. Um, which, by the way, this account and this is how it came up because I purposely have it set on Twitter where I don't like it. It'll hide the fucking porno images for yeah. the most part because too many times I'm looking at a reply and it's just only fans people yeah. with their asshole spread out. I'm like, enough's enough. <laughs> Enough's enough. I can't. I, I. Can you just not? Sometimes a few slip in. Dude, I don't but, know what I did, but my Facebook algorithm, it, I'm now just getting like like a bunch of porn, <laughs> fucking girls in like bikinis and shit. And I'm like, what? like, you know, not that I don't like looking at it, but I don't need to look at that when I'm just scrolling through Facebook. Yeah, there's, there's a limit. Like enough's enough. And I just, every time I'm like, see less, see less, yeah. see less. And it doesn't work. No, they don't seem to care. Um, so anyway, so she does, sets up a get birthday gangbang. So she goes, uh, I don't need all of the editorial about it, but, um. While I'm screaming internally. While I'm screaming, <laughs> let's see, identical, but so I forced my feet to move forward in a den of 42 men all dragging off. I don't know. She's trying to, there's a book, by the way, fantastic book by Chuck Palahniuk called Orgy, which is a, uh kind of like a mystery story that takes place during a gangbang. Great book. Great book. Um, but uh, I boy, think... Boy meets or orgy? Uh, kind of. But I think that's what she's kind of going for for this opening thing there. But I don't really care about all this stuff. So what I want to talk about is the... Um, it's a little huddle. Well, this is the fluffers. This is in a yeah. pre-gangbang huddle. Um, you know, right. I'll have it a good time. So anyway, she sets up a sets up a, a, a gangbang for herself and they had to do tests, you know, tests and everything like that. But this is here's here's the breakdown. Let me pull up this graph here. And uh, this is the birthday gangbang where, you know, she put out a survey to anyone that was interested. She put out a survey to sixteen hundred and four people. Okay. How many? 1604. 1604. Okay. Yep. So I wonder if that's how many she was willing to bang at one time. I don't know. Yeah. So that it, it they kind of go through this like she it's like a bunch of surveys and interviews to kind of whittle it down. Right. And um so she reaches out to 1604 people. Um 828 fa failed the auto filter. So right. I don't know what that exactly meant. Let me see here. Auto. Um, 
Yeah, we started out with a survey, then filtered down automatically, manually, and then did brief interviews. 83 of 83 interviews. Okay. With my approval, organizers rejected anyone associated with EACC. I don't know what that is. Um, because we don't need to give nice things to people hastening our doom. I don't know what that means. Uh, organizers heard at all the attendees through a special form of uh, STI or STD testing. The service through the service pass, uh, which directly sends your clear status to approved organizers uh, to prevent anybody faking anything. So I'm guessing this is like a service that porn companies use. Uh, special shout out to them. Okay, yeah. um, bu- 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 bum. Let's see. Then there was of they required to take uh, and they talk about out- outbreaks. She really gets into the numbers on some of like herpes and stuff because like some of that herp you know could kind of like be hidden yeah. and everything. So it, like dormant. This thing goes way in depth. We're not covering all that stuff, but I just want to cover the 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 headlines here. You can look yeah. this up on your own if you want more. Um, of course, everybody used condoms. Everyone was required to switch out condoms between women uh, to discard any condoms that they accidentally tried to put on backwards. Uh, we went through a lot of condoms apparently. Um, oh, so this is gonna be guys and girls. It's not just her getting banged. Well, they have like fluffers and stuff like that. But uh, the event itself was pretty simple. We had doors open in the evening for a half hour. Uh, you couldn't get in before or afterwards. We checked IDs, sent them to the coat check, where they stripped all their clothes and possessions, put them in a bag marked with a numbered label. Oh, this is real sexy, ain't it? Uh, we gave them name tags on which they wrote their name and bag number. Dude, that would be awesome if they gave, like, Flavor <laughs> Flav names. Like, when the uh, Flavor of Love, they're like, all right, you're delicious. We're going to put delicious <laughs> yeah. on your bag. You're pumpkin. Yeah. yeah. You're zit ass. <laughs> We gave them name tags, which they w- wrote their name and bag number, also to differentiate the identical uh, Ayala's B-Day branded bathrobes that they handed out. So they had she had branded bathrobes for everybody. Um, then we had an opening circle where we went over rules, behavioral norms, and expectations. One of the organizers made everyone solemnly swear to do their best to come only in the birthday girl as opposed to any of the fluffers. Do you think they had a talking stick? Like, they're sitting in a circle, and they have, like, a dildo. And they're yeah. like, when you're holding the dildo, you can talk. Yeah. It's like, okay. And because she's the birthday girl, yeah. by the way. She yeah. wants all the loads, apparently. Yep. In she total, wants all the frosting. And totally, we had 15 people in some staff, organizer, or fluffer capacity. Though the only people who got paid to be there were the security guards. Oh, so the, the other ones are volunteers. They're all volunteers because it's their birthday. They're just right. doing this for the birthday. So by the way, I don't think they filmed any of this. This was just for a birthday gangbang, privately. It was a substance-free party. We didn't provide alcohol, though some someone there did pass out Viagra. I think a lot of people arrived there already on Viagra. One of the attendees also brought stickers to hand out. I went to Ella's birthday gangbang, and all I got was this crappy sticker. <laughs> the entire orgy cost $3,335, with most of the cost going to venue, robes, food, and security cards. <laughs> Um, let's see. But does the venue just like a VFW hall? Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, like don't... I mean, we've rented halls for like two grand, right? Yeah, maybe and... that's what they did, got a VFW. They're like, what are you, what are you young people doing in that VFW tonight? Like, you don't want to know, Gramps. It's it's only Ayala's birthday. <laughs> yeah, just a birthday party. Oh Lord. Let's see, t- tickets to attend were free but had optional donations. 81% of people paid something and 19% attended for free. So so this is the thing, though. These are not all just friends. These are people that she reached out yeah. to to just do it, just to like, hey, would you like to do this? Okay. So a lot of strangers, it sounds like, would be the thing. Um, let's see. Uh, the average donation was $63, bumped up by three people who graciously paid a few hundred each. So that's uh, that's not bad considering they probably they probably made a good chunk of their cost back. We had a surprise expense when needing to hire security guards because our previous security volunteers couldn't make it at the last minute. We ended up in the red, but some attendees donated afterwards and in the end managed to not lose money on this orgy. Great. Ten other women attended, two to to help out while looking hot, doing things like running the coat check. <laughs> they just find all this ridiculous. And being a point of contact for other women in case they needed anything. And eight fluffers who helped get the men hard for me. That would be that would be tricky though. It's just like because the fluffers are like they're just jerking you off and kind of blowing you, right. but just kind of keeping you. 
keeping you going. So I wonder if they just rotate, like they're just yeah. running around, like it's like Duck Duck Goose, but like yeah. they're like just jerking around the circle. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, who <laughs> who needs to be fluffed? Like I just, I remember hearing about this stuff back in the day, and it always still sounded ridiculous to me. But now as I've gotten older, I'm like, now that you kind of understand, because I remember hearing this in the 90s when I was like a teenager, and I was like, I I guess maybe in those environments, it's just so crazy. But as an adult, I'm like, the logistics in this, this sounds like work. Yeah. This does not sound fun. This doesn't, like, I'm a pretty, I'm not a, I'm not a unless, prude by any unless means. One but, of, unless you're one of those 19% that just attended for free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, so we, uh, let's see, 10 other women attended to try. Oh, yeah, that's why I read that part. So, yeah, they were helping out. So there's 10 volunteer women. Uh, we had way more fluffer interest than anticipated. So there's just a bunch of girls that were just like, yeah, who I could just jerk off some dudes. Why not? <laughs> By the end, we were turning away women trying to get in, which was an absurd position to be in. I think more women than you might think actually do want to participate in gangbang sluttery. You know, that's great to know. Uh, they may not just admit it publicly. Which is all fascinating, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so she goes down into that a little bit. Um, okay, so of the 42 who attended, 37 actually penetrated me, thus tanking the average Ayala number of the planet. Um, average Ayala number, I don't know what that means. But anyway, so, uh, oh, wait, we need an Ayala number. Uh, Ayala girl is zero, slept with her, slept with her is one, slept with them is two. I don't know what that means. There's some sort of like math thing yeah. that they're doing. So anyway, so here's the here's the breakdown. Okay, so I read all that just to kind of break down. Okay, so this what they got this map that we're looking at this breakdown. It's like a flow chart. Yeah, it reminds me of another great show from the '90s, Singled Out. Okay, so we start off with 1604 competitors. Yes, you're like, hey, who failed the auto test? You gotta leave. Yes. So we have 828 people leaving right off the bat. Yeah, they just fill that. There was an auto filter. They didn't pass that. Then 776 passed the auto filter, but then they had to manually filter the surveys. And 328 of those were like, "Yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah, maybe we should probably not do so that." They hold, held up the card that said "pass manual filter," and then yeah. like you know, a bunch of girls leave or a bunch of people leave, and then we get down to 448. Yep. So 448 passed the manual filter, um, and then they contacted 251. They just there was 197. They just didn't even contact. Yeah, I wonder what happened with them. I, my thing is probably just a logistics of time to yeah. contact that many people is a lot. So they probably just got were like, okay, we got 251. You know how many are responding? Well, I want, uh, does it uh, does this article say what like the filter contains? Like, is it like a, like a application or do you have to send? Yeah, a picture? It, it was like a survey. Yeah, I, I didn't see it on here. I don't know if they posted like the full survey. I'll, I'll look afterwards. But um, but they had like a survey of all kinds of questions, probably just like to – it was probably lengthy knowing how this girl is uh, through this article. Like she just she just like autistically goes into all of these st- statistics. Well, she's got math face. Yeah, she does. Um, so they didn't contact 197. They contacted 251. 143 of those didn't respond. So they probably thought it was a joke. Probably. They're like, I didn't even expect you to respond to me. And then um, then they did. There's 25 of those were just friends that they already knew. So they were like, ah, we don't got to interview you. 83 did get interviewed. 21 of those. They I think they got creeped out or something. They're like, yeah, we're not going to. No, we're not doing that. Um, so between the people that they did interview and didn't reject and the 25 friends. Dude, imagine being one of the 21 rejected. Yeah. Like, imagine what they said or did to get them rejected. Yeah, they're like, no, nah, we're not going to do like, that. Uh, I like clowns and when they <laughs> piss on my face. Yeah, that's. <sighs> they're like, yeah, this is not going to be the move. So out of that, 87 got invited. All right. Okay. So they got them invited, but they had to go through and get a ticket through their ticketing system, which didn't cost anything. 31 was like, yeah, you know what? Never mind. Thanks for the invite, but I'm not going to get a ticket. I'm not a ticket guy. 56 got a ticket. Okay. 13 of those canceled. All right. So 43 ended up doing an STD test. Okay. So we're at 43 people from the 1,604 that they started with. One person just didn't show out of that. 
42 showed up, but five of them didn't bang this girl okay. for whatever reason. So that means 37 of them actually penetrated her. 15 of them didn't come at all. all right. They just couldn't do it, which I, I can't blame them. It's kind of, it sounds like a chaotic environment. I right? mean, maybe they come with the fluffer. Well, no, because only five of them came in a fluffer. They already have the statistic <laughs> there for damn you. damn it. Yeah, so these people just couldn't finish, which, again, I don't blame. There's a lot going on. So out of six, so she invites 1,604, and only 17 are able to jizz in her. All right. So that's like, what is that, like 10% of the, in, uh, well, right? Let, let's do the math. Seven, or a hundred or a one point seven percent. Yeah, it's it's a low percentage. So or one percent, I should say. Seventeen divided by sixteen oh four is just over one percent. Okay, so about one percent from who she invited. So this this was what interested me though, is this statistic of again you saw her, attractive girl has math, math, math face. face. But I wouldn't say no to her if I met her in person, you know, if I didn't know about all this. Um, and uh, so everyone always says, like, oh, well, girls have it easy. All they have to do is just put it out there and they could just hook up with anybody. Yeah. And in reality, it was a lot. It takes a lot more than just saying, hey, I'm open for business. Because in order for her to get jizzed in 17 times in the same day, which seems like a lot, right. but you can see it's probably somewhat achievable for a girl. She had to extend an invite originally to 1,600 people. But I wonder To if, safely get jizzed in, by but I, Safely. Yeah, but I wonder if it was like not a gangbang. If, you know, yeah. 1,600 people, that number would probably be way higher. Yeah, but, but my point is, is that the, the general idea is... Like, hey, I need to, I want to get jizzed in as much as possible in one day. The most strategic way and, and time effective way would be a gangbang, right? So, but, and it still goes to the point of you have to reach out to that many people. Like you have a 1% conversion rate from outreach to jizz. Yeah, but what if you did it like instead of a gangbang, like you had you had like a hotel room, right? And everyone just lined up in the hallway and they just went in one by one. I think you would get more than 1%. I don't know. I don't know like because more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. At, look at how many people fell off before. I mean, this is how many people just canceled that. 13 right, but canceled. These from the beginning, like, they know it's a gangbang. That's what I'm saying. Like if they knew if yeah, but, they thought it was like a one-on-one -on -one thing, I think more but people would have got through the walls. But even if it was like a line in a, like a hallway of a hotel, they they still know it's a game bang. Like right, they're in but, line with other people. But the thing is, is you're not like naked and fucking in front of other people. You still have that privacy of fucking. Yeah. No, that's I, where I, that's what my point is. I think the number would be higher if it wasn't like a public display of you fucking the chick. But you you still have like the time oh, constraint. I yeah. So I think that that because then I think in what you're saying is. Yeah, you may have more people interested, but you'd literally you'd run out of time logistically. Right. Yeah. So I don't think it would actually change all that much, and I th I just thought that was that was intriguing to where yeah one percent is what it takes. So ladies out there, don't get too cocky thinking like oh I can get whatever I want because I got a vagina and I look good. You get a one percent conversion rate. Yeah. Slow it down. Slow your roll. Whoa! What is this? Anybody got a hard cog? Line yourself. Okay, so this is <laughs> let's let's go back. So the event was not kind towards men's penises. Lots of men had trouble getting hard, which is deeply understandable because practically for them, because practically for them, the experience was a bit like being a breeder in a cow pen. Uh, the way it worked was a few men volunteers held me down on a bed, and a line of guys approached. Once a guy was sufficiently hard, he'd bang me. Summoned by organizers yelling, anybody got a hard cock, line yourselves up. So, yeah, they, they had to kind of be like, who's the most ready? Yeah. We're taking you if you're ready. We can't have you, you know, flipping around this limp dick all the time. They would they had to jack off themselves furiously, and then they got three minutes to attempt to come while banging. Well, see, that's you're putting this time constraint in there. It's That's that's a little too much. Um, And then, uh, so you got three minutes, like... I wonder if they put a clock. 
<laughs> yeah, they're like, watch the clock. Hey, the, the guy, one of the guys holding her down is like snapping his face. Hey, hey, look at the clock. Look at the clock. You're like, what? Oh. Uh, reset it, reset it. Next <laughs> one, reset it. It's just a countdown. <laughs> um, you and have about 180 seconds. Go. So, uh, yeah, while I was closely surrounded by other men who prevented me from biting, me from biting or kicking anyone, for kink reasons, I asked them to hold me. Okay, so that was like her. She was getting off on that. They also had to switch condoms between other fluffers and me. This was extreme hard mode or soft mode. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm honestly surprised as many men got as hard as they did. Yeah, so they're kind of like they're already wearing condoms, like fucking around with these other girls. And then they're like, all right, who's ready? Who's up next? Yeah, and then you got to f- switch condoms. Yeah, like that's you're asking a lot, lady. <laughs> My own partner, for example, despite being excellent at sex and the primary organizer of this and other sex events, usually needs to be alone with a lady in order to get hard. And that, that's fair. I get it. Uh, we did have fluffers to help in the same room where I was getting boned. Other fluffers were strewn about, lying on fuck benches and sucking cock, etc. What kind of venue was this? <laughs> well, they have fuck benches, you know. VFW, probably. <laughs> there's actually There's a separate room for where she's getting fucked. <laughs> so Fluffer got to participate however they wanted with with whoever they wanted and normal orgy consent rules applied. Ask before touching. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we all get that. So, oh. So I wonder if like there was people there that just like fucked and left without fucking her. Well, yeah, there was. There was, uh, fifth, well, there was five. Five in particular came in there and it wasn't able to come in her. Hmm. So, um, so which of the fluffers did you engage with? So they took a poll afterwards and there was these ones, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are the different fluffers. And this one was doing a lot of blow jobs. A, fluffer A was doing a lot of blow jobs and a little bit of hand job. Uh, and then somebody came in her, <laughs> uh, fluffer B did a lot of vaginal, yeah, she- a lot of vaginal, a lot of blow jobs, a lot of hand jobs. She was doing everything. And, of course, most of them She's, came in her. Yeah, she seems like she was the most popular. Yeah, she was... The, Fluffer B really kind of stole the show, yeah. I think, here. Uh, Fluffer C, not so much. Just strictly hand jobs. She was kind of the wet blanket. Yeah. She was like, ah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just doing well, Andy's. And H. Yeah, H, H was even less so. Like, all right. She didn't give any blowjobs. Uh, D was mostly vaginal, but not to the extent of B. Yeah. It was like a half. It was like the stats of B, it's but a third. Yeah, E was pretty similar to to B, just again a small amount. Well, but here's the thing: D, E, and F all did a little bit of everything. Yeah, G too. G a little bit, a little yeah, less. a little bit more yeah. hand job though. Um, but D, E, and F mostly vaginal and oral, but they were overshadowed by B, and I think because so many were doing B that. These other ones suffered. Like, imagine being the, the, one of these fluffers, right? Yeah. And you you have, like, a lonely Virgil table, right? Yeah. You have a, That's H. Yes. Hand jobs only. You have a table, and you have people lined up, and <laughs> B's got a line out. <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, cool, I'm H. Yeah. I guess I can be H. This is hand job only. And she probably gave, like, an angry one. She's, like, looking away. Like, eh. like an Indian rug burn? Yeah, like, eh, dry. There was like one dude, because he was just. He was like, I'll throw, I'll throw like a pity hand job out there. All right, in the I'll ex- put my hand through this hole. So in the exit survey, we asked for info about which fluffers people engage with. As you can see, Fluffer B fluffed hard, closely followed by Fluffer A's mouth skills. Okay, yeah, we kind of covered all this. Um, and fluffers reported afterwards they had a good time and didn't feel uncomfortable or coerced at any point. Well, I would hope not. Um, yeah, so everybody was great. Fantastic. Uh, one of them, guy who brought the stickers, was a virgin. Oh. Wow. We asked if we could celebrate his first time, and he said, yes, the wackier the better. Oh, that's, of course, of course a virgin whose first time is at an orgy gangbang would say that. Um, so we had him go first, and he literally said Leroy Jenkins as he entered. I don't know if you know that reverence, Leroy Jenkins. What is the what is the reference? Oh wow, that's it's an old meme. So it's, it's old school. Oh, okay. Anyway, so the listeners get it. They get it. Yeah, the old Leroy Jenkins. And he just anyway. 
So in pop confetti over him when he finished, I signed a personalized gift for him. Oh, that's great. He was also wearing a heart rate monitor and shared the data with me. So we had heart rate data. Let's see the heart rate data of the virgin. Um, so here's so his first round of sex, he got up to about his heart rate was up a little bit, right? Yeah. And then I'm assuming this is where he finished because it really spiked right around. There was like a real big spike right here. And then here's where he's just touching some <laughs> touching some tits. It's like, but there's a question mark. Like, like touching, touching breasts? Tits? I think so is what happened there. And then it spiked a little bit here with a little BJ double penetration, I guess. Double penetration. And then uh, then he did some missionary and doggy up here with a fluffer. Yeah. Okay, so that was, he, he spiked up a little bit again. Is this all within the three minutes? No, 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 I think this is the whole time. Well, this I is, know, but they only get three minutes. Yeah, but this, no, what I mean is, like, this is with her. Right. This is with a fluffer. Okay. Right? And then he took a break. Then he had a second round, so he went back for seconds. I know, but the time period. Is, and that, then he held back. Is that, so is that, like, six minutes total? He had no, this is probably, like, the entire day. Oh. Because this is, like, all the, this is, like, all of the shit. There's, gotcha. like, four sex, you know, scenarios in here. So, yeah, because he had a second Restraint. round. He had, he had some missionary and a doggy style with a fluffer. He got a blowjob over here. He touched a breast over there. And then it was his first round of sex over there. Um, he touched the breast. Yeah, well, that's what it said. I don't know. He t- touched it. He got freaked He's out. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a huge spike for that. Um, let's see. Once a man had sex with me, he drew a tally mark on my leg with a Sharpie and then signed the guest book. <laughs> Which was a pretty white wedding guest book I got because it was hilarious. That's, yeah. Fucking hilarious. Turns out lube ruined Sharpies, so despite us starting with a surplus of Sharpies, by the end of the night we were scrounging. Uh, Upon banging the birthday girl, men got a sticker, blue for banging, gold if they came, which allowed them to access, allowed them access in our third room where they could continue banging and coming in fluffers if they wanted if the fluffers were down. Okay, so that's that explains the heart rate thing up here. Um and then they looks like they played uh some some card games of uh I have that game. Wits or wages. Yeah, wits so and they, wages. So they played some wits or wages. <laughs> it's a good that's, game. Yeah. Um let's see, men overratedly so there was a lot of surveys that were being done. Uh, men overwhelmingly rated the experience as positive. Some notes from the exit survey. One of the best evenings I've ever had. That's by the virgin. Yeah. Everyone at the event was amazing. You guys did great work. I want to know what the negatives, though. Like, oh, my God, the whole event was a stand experience. Who was like, yeah, there was just a smell. <laughs> I would love someone to be like, I don't know, it was great, but there was like this weird smell, and that one girl only did hand jobs. Yeah, Fluffer H. Yeah. Like, can you just get rid of her next time? Yeah, the hand job thing was a little bit much. Um, I've been to a number of orgies and getting back in New York City, but this was the best. Not even close. See, two guys reported having six orgasms, but most only had one. Uh, over the last three months, on average, how frequently have you had penetrative sex? How many orgasms did you have? What's that chart? Oh, yeah, this is how many orgasms did you have? So this is that day. So this, so... Oh, okay. So zero one. I was looking yeah. at that's like twelve orgasms. I was no, like, what? Twelve of them had zero orgasms. Yeah. Fourteen had one. Seven had two. One had three. Two people had four. Two of them had six. <laughs> two, yeah, two people. Jesus had Christ! Six. They just couldn't stop jizzing. They Dude, were just my like, dick would be hurting like a motherfucker. Um, six times in a day. Yeah, that's a that's a bit much. Let's see, over the past, uh, and then this is another tally on all these people. Over the past, last three months, on average, how frequently have you had penetrative sex? Um, more than once a day was pretty low. Uh, daily is actually a small piece of the pie chart. Uh, multiple times a week, it would be 37%. Most of them was just like multiple times a week. Like they're probably in a relationship or something like that. Yeah. 10% was once a week. Multiple times in the month was a, like the second highest, yeah. which is okay. Uh, and then then another small chunk was once a month, and then another small chunk was once every few months. And then the virgin. And then that's the virgin, which was never, yeah. Uh, most guys were getting laid on the regular before attending. I don't like the way the, the, the like the language being used here. Like, they're getting on the regular. On the rig. Like, you're not a cowboy. Let's just settle down. 
Smoking <laughs> weed on the rag. How many people Getting did you have on the rag. vaginal sex with at the event? Um, okay, so this is how many. So how much vaginal sex did they have at the event? So n- there was two people that had none. No, they had no vaginals. That, they must have just finished in someone's mouth or something. Or they could have just been observing because they could get in for free. Well, these are the, all the participants. Oh, okay. So then there was... Um, all these charts are confusing. Five of them had one vaginal sex. Okay. Twelve of them had two vaginal sexes. <laughs> Ten of them had three vaginal sexes. Six had four vaginal sexes. And two had five vaginal Those sexes. Those two people... The two people that probably came fucking six times. Which is wild because they had five vaginal sexes. That yeah. means the other one was somewhere else in a mouth and a hand. Or twice in one vagina. Could, oh, could be that too, yeah. Um, let's see. Only three people reported to being subscribed to my OnlyFans. So that was interesting. Um, overall, I'm glad I did it. It was a novel, intense experience. I'm deeply grateful for the entire one. Okay, so this oh, there's is- the oral sex one. Oh, I missed the oral one. Okay, so this is how many people did you have oral sex with? So two people said no, no blowjobs for me. No. Eleven people said at least one. I'm assuming those two people are the same two people ever graph. Yeah. Yeah, they were just like, I just can't. They're like, we can't get past this wits and wagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're too busy playing this board game. Get out of here. Seven people had two orals. All right. Eight people had three orals. Seven people had four orals, and then there was one person that was five. He just got a little sampling of everybody. He just had a little, you know, he did like the Costco sampler. He he just walked around. Fucking Golden Corral right here. Yeah, you got to take a little sample. Just pop it in. Just pop it in for a few seconds. He's like, "Mm, I I think I'm going to try this one. I haven't came in three years (laughs) just for this event. Um, I've been saving it all. (laughs) For Ayala's birthday. <laughs> Just buzzed and loads. I can't stop. So that was that was all the statistics I seen here. I wanted oh, you mentioned about the survey though. I want to see if they have the the questions. Like how in depth was the que- was the survey? I don't think she's got a link to it on here though. Um let's see. But yeah, that's that was the whole deal. It looks like there was just a big birthday gangbang of people that Possible OnlyFans subscribers and OnlyFans girls. Uh, sounds like a wild time. But yeah, I don't see any links to... Um, I don't see any links to like the actual survey itself. I wonder if any of these ha- people had like post-nut clarity. Yeah, like, like why, am why? I, why am I doing this? <laughs> what the fuck did I just do? Yeah, like... What did I do five times? <laughs> That person is was clear from the jump. He's like, I know what I'm here to do. You may, he says, you know, you may not know who I am, but you, but you know why I'm, here. but you know why I'm here. I'm here to nut. They call me <laughs> the cum master. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, they call me C man. <laughs> <laughs> And like, what if he was like a like a very loud orgasmer? Oh yeah, he just screams. Like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> They're like Frank's over there, fucking coming again. <laughs> the whole place is rattling. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I thought that was intriguing, but yeah, this was something I was I set aside to cover on a stream, but I was just like, I just some of this stuff I can't. It's a little, it's a little much. It's a little risque for, for video. Yeah, you know. So you're, you're like, oh, I don't know if I could follow all the numbers. Just go to the her. The article is on what is a Substack is the article, and just just look up A L S O A E L L A. Google A A E L L A Substack My Birthday Gangbang. Just Google that, you'll find it. Yeah. Um, you might be able to buy that nice hoodie or whatever that guy was wearing. Or it was a robe. This was the robe that all the attendees or girl wearing. got as I went to the LLB Day gangbang. And all I got was this bathrobe and also to fuck up porn star. Is it? Okay, so over there. This is probably at the event, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the event. So there's a counter right there. What yeah. is that? Is that food? Yeah, yeah, they probably had snacks. They said they bought food. Oh, did they? Yeah. But, you, but okay, so this is what's interesting, though, because look at the floor. This is not a hotel room. It's a VFW hall. This is, this is like concrete floors. <laughs> they probably what put, is- like, an air mattress. 
<laughs> one of the fluffers is just blowing up the air mattress. <laughs> like, but yeah, I. You know what? I well. Never That's mind. probably what H was doing. Fluffer H was probably just blowing up the bear mattress. Probably just like and cleaning like hair, stuff up. Hair, and like hand job and like okay, I gotta pump this like, fucking air mattress up. Like oh well, you, somebody needs a blow job. Well, give me a sec because I was just gonna go to the snack table real quick. Yeah, a snack. I was gonna make I sure was... that there's enough cupcakes for everyone. Yeah, baby carrots. So, um, so there was something about this. Now, this is something I did do on the stream, and I thought this was kind of relates because we're talking about gangbangs, yeah. and we don't talk about them very often. No, we so it's a good time to. Get into it, but there was a there's a poem that someone sent me. Shout out to Uncle Stinker, uh, and he sent me this poem. Um, and it's here's the backstory, and I'll read the poem to everybody. But it was it's a poem. It's on a live journal site of all things. It this guy he says that he was. That he was basic. He went to he went to prison. We looked up the story on yeah. this guy. He was like a political activist back in the day. Um, this guy Stephen Donaldson, and he wrote this poem in 1981, after after all of this happened, and he apparently he has a story about how all these prisoners in the prison had sex with him. Meanwhile, he wasn't in prison for very long, and he, they just all like, you know, kind of raped him. It was like yeah. a gang rape, but. There's a video. There's I think there's a video on my YouTube. I don't know if it's still up because YouTube was kind of cl- clamping down on me. But um, if not, I can I can post it somewhere else. Uh, but it's uh, we we looked into it and the story doesn't quite match up. Like he 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 calls this poem that he wrote after the event my the seventh rapist. Okay. And because apparently he was being gang raped, but but as we read the story leading up to this poem, it didn't really seem like there was a, there was some there was some stuff in the story that seemed like far fetched. Yeah, I was like, was it was was this like was this like a raping raping or was this like a is this more of a fantasy that you're having? It was a little it was a little strange. So we're not sure if it's real, just like uh, the Hulkster in heaven. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yes. Think of it that way. It is just as questionable as the Hulkster in heaven. There might be a little bit of truth in it, but it's not 100% like verifiable. But I figured this is a good opportunity, you know, to we can kind of cover this and bring this to this to this podcast because right. I've been wanting to bring poetry to the podcast uh, for a while. Dude, you should have told me because I am a poet and you may have not have known it. I didn't know it, so that's good to know. So... Here it is. It's called The Seventh Rapist. So apparently there's a gangbang of people coming into this prison cell raping him. All right. But this one goes to the seventh one. So. That was a nice little kiss before you. I know. Uh, I gave I gave the little Dunkachino a, a kiss. A kiss before we, like, get, we gonna, get into rape. Yeah, you want to you wanna hang out, sit in my lap while I'm reading this poem about The Seventh Rapist? I'm sure this guy got kissed on his neck like yeah, that. Yeah, like a little, give him a little, kid, you know, cat kiss. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, he'd be a good boy. <laughs> and then he, then he scratched me and he ran away. So he's like, nah, I don't want none of this. Well, I know better than that. When you're in a cell, you can't run away. That's true. That's so. true. So this is let me, let's. I'll I'll read this real quick. So it's called the Seventh Rapist. It starts off. You're different from the others. I can tell right away. How strange, soft, delicate kiss on the back of my neck, just like I gave to the to the cat. Um, a soft, delicate kiss on the back of my neck. Uh, as upon me, your conquering body, you lay, meeting my terror and fear with a tentity tongue on the lobe of my ear. What kind of rapist is this who commences his rape with a kiss? Uh, He's giving him a little kiss on the, I mean, on the ear. Okay. Kind of what you just did to Duncan. Kind of. Well, but it was like a little cat kiss. It wasn't like... This guy's like kind of like tonguing his ear. I didn't. I didn't involve a tongue. Kinda tongued his ear. No, I didn't. No, I did not. My mouth was closed. So, um, where was I? Meaning my tongue. With t- oh, with a tentative tongue on the lobe of my ear. What kind of rapist is this who commences his rape with a kiss? You're different. You didn't start with the pain of a savage attack. A Ben Savage attack. Ben, yeah. Or a Randy Savage attack. Both, maybe. From the top rope. He's a real macho man. <laughs> um. With feelings of warmth from your chest to my back, 
from the heat of your thighs on my sensitive ass and your cock not inside but on top of my crack as you wait for my desolate sobbing to pass. You're different. Now soothing you whisper with head next to mine. I'll take it real slow. We got plenty of time. It may hurt you at first, no denying the facts, but things will go better if you can relax. Okay, can you stop reading it like the night before Christmas or whatever? <laughs> it's, a, it's a poem. That's how you read it. That's how you got to read it. It's, it's, say, it's saying it in the same tone as, you know, the, the whoever was dancing in their heads. <laughs> like, like visions of sugar plums yes. dancing in their heads. And all of a sudden there arose such a clatter. Yeah. Stop, it, stop, stop reading it like as that. As you nibble on my ears, sending chills down my spine. How I wonder that rapist so gently attacks. Are you, are you different? You wait till I'm quiet, then enter real slow, holding me down with your arms as you go. Oh, a sharp stab of pain as I struggle in vain to escape from your battering ram. Then you soothe me once more as I'm pierced, pierced to the core and impaled on the flesh of a man. You're different. You cover me, motionless bodies we lay, until I relax as the pain ebbs away, whispering comforting words in my ear, telling me now I have nothing to fear. Waiting for this one to slowly adjust to being a slave to your masculine lust. When I am calm, it's your warmth that, that I feel as you cover my body from shoulder to heel, protectively <laughs> keeping the next one at bay, I compare your concern with their merciless thrust, and I suddenly want you to stay. Oh, see, now, now it's not. a love story. It's a Beauty and Beast scenario. It's the whole story. It's like, oh, I didn't want you until your cock was my ass. Yeah. No, oh, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want you to leave. I actually didn't mind this. Um, you're different. So you're filling me now with your masculine power, the seventh to rape me in less than an hour. <laughs> the difference is this. You don't treat me like dirt. Your body makes love where the others make hurt, so I don't mind your vigorous fucking so much, but mentally dwell on the feel of your touch, on your maleness inside me, on being possessed, on feelings that girls have, and all of the rest. Kind of got lazy there. It's like, yeah, yeah you know that yeah, stuff. That goes all that stuff. When finally your passion ascends to the height, and you lunge and you kiss me and squeeze me real tight, <laughs> and you shudder and groan and you fill me with cream, I know that I've caught... In your sexual dream, you're different. You whisper, I want you to be my own punk. I'll keep those jocks off you. You'll be in my cell, babe, and sleep in my bunk. And you if, missed the line. Wait, what did I miss? He said, I'll keep you or the jocks off you. Don't worry. Oh, no yeah, okay. There we go. Yeah, let's just re let's start this over. From the others, I can <laughs> tell right now. <laughs> So you're different. You whisper, I want you to be my own punk. I'll keep those jocks off you. Don't worry no more. You'll be in my cell, babe, and sleep in my bunk. And if anyone hurts you, I'll even the score. Relaxing beneath you, flesh still in my hole. I consider your offer. Ponder my role. It's clear now the difference is really your goal. The six took my body. You're taking my soul. Snap. That was deep. Steven Donaldson in prison, July 12th, 1981. That was about six inches deep. That was. So I figured that's the best way to put the, you know, we started with the maths and science of a gangbang. Yeah. And ended on the art. Yes. And literature. Yes. Of a gangbang. So that's. I wonder if he had math surf. face. I. Uh, yeah, I think he's got something. He may have had meth face, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I Something like that. Yeah, she had math face. He had meth face. Yeah. He, he is, you know, he's in prison in the 80s. A little rough. A little, a little rough. Oh, imagine if he never went to prison and, like, he just wrote that poem. And then his, like, buddy <laughs> comes over and is, like, it, like maybe on the coffee table or something, like his notebook. And he, like, yeah. picks it up and he's, like, like the guy's taking a shit or something. Yeah. And he's time to kill. And he's, Yeah, you like, you like what you're reading over there? I've been working on that one. Thinking I might get it published. He's like, I won't hurt you. Or what, yeah. what was the what was the line that uh, you're different? Yeah, you're different. You're different. You're different. But um, yeah. So I guess you know. With that being said, don't be different. Well, you could if you want, but that's that's what's out there. I mean, this is the life you could be living, or you could be at home just watching Boy Meets World for the seventh time. Dude, which is a safer route? I think it's Boy Meets World. And it enlightens you. 
I don't know. I think a good, I think a good old fashioned gangbang. Dude, dude, Sean Hunter got arrested for peeing on a cop car. It's edgy. I, yeah, I guess. It's edgy. He was drunk. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I know. <laughs> Fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> Have you ever been drunk and pissed on a cop car? Not on a cop car, no. So, no. Sean Hunter's got one up on you. All right, all right. He also lives in a trailer park. Mm. I'll take that. Dude, it's funny because one of the episodes, like, it's a Thanksgiving episode, and they go to the trailer park to, like, eat dinner with Sean's family, mm -hmm. and they're outside, and, like, the trailers are just on dirt. <laughs> like, they don't get yeah. grass or anything. They make that. it look like they just, like, pulled over and parked there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, I think what we talked about, we got a pretty good episode coming up here yeah. for next week because we're going to do a little homework. Yes, we are. I think we're going to do a little homework. Um, but, yeah, we did a great uh, Power Hour stream. Yep. You can catch that on uh, pretty much everywhere. It's on Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Twitch. Um, Go follow us on all of those. Yep. Subscribe, like, mm -hmm. comment. Um, we got 64-Bit Mania coming up. You'll be seeing promos for that. Um, None Man has to defend his title against uh, Astro Dynamo, a.k.a. That's Gary true. Galaxy, for all of his friends. It is coming up here real quick. Um, and then, uh, oh, make sure you check out W.GG. Yes. Promo code 64-Bit Legends for your energy, your hydration. They have plenty of flavors. They even have a sample pack that you can get like five different flavors so you can try them all. Save your 10%. Mm -hmm. Use the promo code 64-Bit Legends. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. it. pretty much covers it. Yeah. You know. So next time you go to a gangbang and you need to be hydrated, get some W. Yeah. It's good for your jizz. Yeah, it is. It's high in zinc. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but if it is, then great. And um, I guess until next time, what you going to do, brother, when all your friends invite you to a gangbang, but you don't fill out the autofill questionnaire and you get left out? Yeah. What are you going to do? You gonna check that Wi-Fi? You gonna make sure that you can pass that test and get in with Fluffer number H that only does hand jobs? Or are you gonna be a I was gonna say a word that we can't use. <laughs> You're gonna be a retard. Yeah. Don't be a retard. Join your friends at the next gangbang.